And now for their final outing is John Clark and Brian Dore. Good evening. We've been asked to introduce a sequence of some of Kerry's interviews over the years. There is one last very quick question. No, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. He's interviewed some interesting people, hasn't he, Kerry? He certainly has, yeah. And some of them got a lot more interesting while he was interviewing them, didn't they? <laughs> Kevin Rudd got more interesting when he was talking to he Kerry. He did, yeah. He surprised himself. He got very interesting indeed at one point. You know something, Kerry? I have a very short memory as well, so... <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that means, but we'll move on. <laughs> Tony Abbott got more interesting as well. Tony Abbott was very nearly fascinating a couple of times, wasn't he? I had not offered him money. And I stand by that. You offered him costs. Well, I said that he wouldn't be out of pocket. That's money. Oh, come on, Tony Kerry. Abbott, that's that money. Let's, let me hear it from your lips. Let's, that let's, is money. Let's move on. I've always said about Kerry O'Brien that if you're handing out awards and you turn up at the ABC, then that's where you start. You start with Kerry O'Brien and you work your way back from there. Why are you talking to me? I barely knew Kerry. Why are you across to George Negus? He's got his office made up, so it looks like he's in Jordan. Hi folks, it's uh, George Negus speaking, but not from the Logies. I'm actually talking to you from Amman, the capital of Jordan, would you believe? I got a call a few days ago telling me that my very best mate in the business is Kerry O'Brien, who's going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Well, well done, Kes. Yes, Kerry worked for Gough Whitlam, I worked for Bob Hawke, and we got some criticism for that. But in my mind, and I'm sure it worked this way with Kerry, that it gave us an insight into the way the government worked. That's something that I'd never apologise for. And I quote, Dr Hewson is himself perceived to be cold and uncaring, a member of the new right, nor is he seen as a person who has any possibility of leading the Liberals to victory at the next election. In other words, you stayed firmly on the nose. Kerry O'Brien, at least, for the meantime sits and asks various people several questions that they have to answer. What makes you angry? If you ask some silly questions, <laughs> oh, again and again, again, then I may lose my temper. I'm a triple threat. I'm handsome, um, I'm a brilliant actor, and, and an accomplished liar. <laughs> <laughs> some people who believe that uh, because of the nature of his work, Kerry didn't have a sense of humour, well, they couldn't be further from the truth. As you can see, Kerry would do the most ridiculous stuff for us. I mean, Anthony didn't, we had to drug him to get him there, but Kerry just said yes. He was always happy to be approached, although one time I did sneak into his office without his permission, and at the end of that, he gave me that look over his glasses, and I felt sorry for every politician who ever not answered a question. Kerry was a dynamic interviewer, a fearless interviewer. And he intimidated them all. It didn't matter to him. There was no bias as far as Kerry O'Brien was concerned. He put them all under pressure. How hard is it going to be for Americans to adjust in a mature way to the increasing prospect that you can't be number one forever? Oh, I, you know, I, I don't think about this as a zero-sum game. Why did you do it? Everybody knew that there was a target on my back and there was a target on the backs of others in the ABC. Kerry was being lambasted as being biased. In fact, no fewer than five of the 12 directors appointed by Mr Shire have now resigned or been sacked. Jonathan Shire joins me now. But in the end, it was the power of Kerry's personality and, the, uh, and his abilities as a journalist that just overrode all that nonsense. Jonathan Shire, how much more time do you think you could reasonably expect to demonstrate to the public that you can actually do this job? Well, at the end of the day, uh, when that era ended, uh, Jonathan Shire walked out and we were still there. This could be a moment of Australian political history. Kerry always nailed election nights and we'd kind of be messing around in the background there. I mean, election nights are tough. It's like, what, six hours of live television with everything changing? Kerry would almost never lose his cool. Anthony, sometimes. Yeah, we've broken the record, suck on that, Kerry O'Brien. <laughs> but it's a tough night. Oh, That's how loose yeah. you get, at what I am. On a day of awful devastation in America that is resonating around the world, that more Australians are likely to have died in the Cooter bomb blasts than the citizens of any other country. It's hard to overstate Kerry's legend here at 7.30 and in the ABC generally. Every big story of that era, every night at prime time at 7.30 on the ABC, you saw Kerry making sense of it with his formidable intellect, his rigour and his genuine engagement in issues that really matter to Australians.
Mike, name me the best politically based current affairs show in the country. Well, late line. I've got a lot of respect for Kerry O'Brien. Yeah, well, what does it rate? Oh, I don't think ratings are three. Ratings. Three, really? You rate five times then. Really? Hey, it makes you wonder why he's so rude to me. It's a matter of simple logic. Yeah, well, if I, well that's my, that, that, that is my argument, if I may say so. Naturally, I got to know Kerry O'Brien well. I'm yeah. sure we were a mile apart on a lot of political issues, but I always respected his professionalism. Kerry, you've, you've taken the words out of my mouth. It is a matter of simple logic to me. And it was important that somebody in my position turn up and be cross-examined. Could I just finish? But I haven't answer? finished the question. Uh, well, well, I mean, you did interrupt earlier. Now let's, now, let's have a sensible interview. OK. I think both of us enjoyed the jousting on occasions, but it was an important part of the political scene. It's really a credit to Kerry that he could not so much switch to vulnerable, but just go to areas where he wasn't so familiar. I can still run in high heels. I can still, I still find... It's a slow. famous run, actually. Yes, it is. It's quite... I, oh, no! He was genuinely interested in celebrities and he had this inquiring mind. What are your own standout memories of that time without inviting There are no you standout none. memories of Los Angeles. My mother always used to say that, that, that uh, she could watch anything that, that Gene Hackman, any film that Gene Hackman had made and any interview that Kerry O'Brien had conducted. President Marcos gone? President Marcos is gone. We're on the edge of the palace. We're in a kind of a no-man's land. Kerry, much respect and warmest congratulations from all of your former colleagues here at 7.30. Congratulations, Kerry O'Brien, and uh, good luck for the future. You had an enormous work ethic and you were the most dedicated journalist I ever worked with. It's Ramadan, would you believe, as I talk to you, and that makes it impossible for me to get a glass of red in my hand, but I'd like you to have one for me. Julia Gillard, thank you very much for talking with us. A historic day. Thanks, Kerry. Good day for redheads. <laughs> you got me.